<clears throat> so getting into this episode of GH, um, <laughs> I don't know what this was, but I, I just, this episode really wasn't holding my attention like that. It wasn't, I ain't gonna lie to you. It wasn't, I was, I was finding myself yawning through some of this episode. I'm like, mm. it was just a whole bunch of, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> um, as far as Chase and BLQ, I am happy that they had that conversation yet again about their money. You know, what's going to go down with that? I, I think having financial conversations before you get married are very important. Um, and I'm glad that they hashed that out. I don't know if it's the last that we're going to see of that because a part of me felt like it might rear its head again. Um, I felt like it was a mature conversation. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm glad BLQ brought up her Benson, her side of the family, you know, her mom's side of the family who are not wealthy people. You know, they just live comfortable. You know what I'm saying? They're hardworking middle class people. They live comfortable. And that's how she want to be, you know, um, but that's what I like about BLQ because BLQ has had both worlds. You know what I'm saying? She's had the wealthy side and she's had the not wealthy side. So she comes from both. She can relate to both, you know, and that's what I like. It makes her very layered in that way. Um, I I like Chase's idea, you know what I'm saying? Like taking the interest from her trust fund and putting that into, a, you know, to some type of an, an account for their future children and stuff. I think that's a good idea. Um, and them not really using her trust fund to buy anything like they're just going to use her trust fund if they ever find themselves in a financial pickle. I think that's a good idea, you know, for me. I feel like it is. Um, I'm I'm still very big on a prenup. I know BLQ is not stressing him about a prenup. Like she don't want one. I think I still think that she should sign she should sign it. Don't get me wrong, Chase is not a gold digger or nothing like that. I don't see him as that, but it's like I equate prenups with insurance. It's like, would you buy a home without insurance? Would you buy a car without insurance? You know what I'm saying? To me, getting married with a prenup is insurance. Um, just in case, you know, it separates my things from your things. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just makes it clean cut just in case. Um, so I like it. And I'm, you know, I like that, you know, Chase is forward thinking. He was like, you know what? I'm about to get a raise soon. I'm up for a raise. We could take that money that I get from the raise and we could buy like a nice little little home in the forest or something, build something, whatever, you know, invest in some land or whatever. I think those are great ideas. And I'm glad that they had honest conversations about that. Um, it's, it's very important to have. Um, <clears throat> moving on from that. I don't like what the writers are doing with Laura. I really don't. Like, I'm not a fan of what they're doing to her because everything about her conversations late, lately about Sonny and her conversation with Anna today was a what the fuck. Because what rock has Anna and Laura been hiding under all these years? Like, why is it now in 2024? Are they just now coming to the realization that Sonny's a criminal? He orders hit some people. And that's crazy. I mean, I can understand having your blinders on to people sometimes that you call your friend. I get it. You know what I'm saying? But it's they've known him for years. You know what I'm saying? It's like, why is it just now that you're seeing that he's a criminal, that he has a dark side to him? Like, everybody's known that for years. Anybody who's known him or been around him has known that. It's like, I don't get it. Um, His face and his name has been in the news for years. <laughs> like, all his crimes, everything. Like, I don't, I don't get why is this so new to them? Why is this earth shattering information? I don't, I don't understand that. Like, they're making it seem like this is breaking news. Like, they, oh, we just came to the realization this in 2024. That's crazy. That is insane. Now, professionally, I understand if they have to distance themselves from him, which is smart. I get that because it's not a good look to have the mayor and the police commissioner being chummy with the resident criminal that's not a good look you know what i'm saying i remember even bennett was questioning anna about her friendship with him because he didn't understand it and he didn't really like it you know what i'm saying which i understand people are going to question it especially when you are on the other side of the law i'm not mad at them if they want to go after sunny i mean if you want to go after sunny go after him but you know that's their job 
But it's like, why this big revelation now all of a sudden? Like, oh, he's a criminal. Oh, we got to lock him up now. He's a criminal. He's been a criminal. <laughs> he's been that. That ain't new. He ain't just step into that world today. Like, I don't get it. It's weird. Um, and as far as Bennett is concerned, I totally get where Detective Bennett is coming from. As far as um, Dex, him not wanting Dex to be a cop. I get it because... Dex's reasons for being a cop is not a good reason to be a cop. Like, I'm just saying, that's that shouldn't be your only reason because you feel like you're trying to right some wrongs in your life, so you want to be a cop. That's not really a good reason. That shouldn't be your only reason. You know what I'm saying? I think you should have a passion for that kind of work. You know what I mean? Like, you should eat, sleep, breathe, serving and protecting the community. You know what I'm saying? That's something that you, you got to have a burning passion for in order to do it. Um... If not, you're just doing it for your own self and you're doing it for a check. That's it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, no, that's that's not a good reason to do it. So I totally get where Bennett is coming from. Um, He had valid concerns about that. And my thing is watching Detective Bennett, I feel like, why are they wasting him? Like we see him here and there. That's who they should be hooking Jordan up with. I mean, my thing is, if you're not going to have Jordan and Zeke get together, why not her and Bennett? Like, why not have them have scenes together? Like, I just, I don't get why they keep trying to chem test her with all these other people when you got Bennett standing in your face. Like, I don't get it. It's weird to me. Um. Anyway, moving on from that. Yeah, back to Laura. She's pissing me off. <laughs> I love her to, I love her to death. I love Laura to pieces, but her going to Cyrus about this and harping on, you know, him pressing charges on Sonny, I think it's totally ridiculous. Um, because I feel like she's trying to whitewash her brother's crimes. You know what I'm saying? Um, at the end of the day, she could say that's not what she's trying to do, but I feel like that's what she's trying to do. So why is Cyrus redeemable in her eyes, but Sonny not? Like, I'm just saying. Both are criminals. And Cyrus is the same guy, you know, who's responsible for her getting shot. Like, this man tried to take out a whole damn family in one damn day. <clears throat> and she's sitting here trying to get him to turn on Sonny. That's ridiculous to me. Um, and you know, deep Cyrus didn't want to show it, but I feel like deep inside, he's relishing the fact that he has Sonny's fate in his hand. He he loves it. You know, that he feels like he has that power to where he could put Sonny behind bars. Um, he's just, I feel like he's trying to play that victim, that martyr role where he's like, oh, I don't relish this. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. Because this is what he's been wanting. He been wanting to take Sonny out the game. Now you have another opportunity to do that. You think he's not gonna take it? I'd be shocked if he did, unless he got a, some other plan at play. But something tell me he might take this. Um, I just feel like this whole situation with all of them is gonna get messy before long. Like it's already messy, but I got a feeling it's gonna get even messier because with Sonny being all in balance and stuff with them pills being tainted. Ain't no telling how he going to react to things. He already having an FBI agent beat up. So <laughs> ain't no telling what he going to do next when he find all this out, you know. Um. So anyway, moving on from that. I get where Alexis is coming from. I do. You know, because when you're like an addict and you're trying to battle these demons and stuff and you're trying to stay sober. Sometimes the stress of your job, it can cause you to relapse. Sometimes the disappointment from some news can cause you to relapse. Like it's, it's a lot of triggers there. So I totally get why she's so worried and why she's starting to go back to those daily meetings and all that type of stuff, because you're always going to have an urge to go back to your addiction. You could be five years sober. You could be 10 years sober. You're always going to have that urge to go back and do what you were doing before. You know, it's kind of hard to not do it. Um, so I get it. And I also feel like with Finn, he has a lot of resentment, a lot of guilt. You know what I'm saying? Maybe not resentment, but he has a lot of guilt. You know, he treated his father like trash for years. And now his father's slowly slipping away from him. You know, and I think he 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 feels very guilty about that. And I think he's angry with himself about that. But at the end of the day, it's like. It's hard, you know, to to let that go, to let that hurt and anger go. But at the same time, it's like you got to worry about the time that you have now, you know, and that's what Finn need to do. You can't change the past. You know, you can't change what happened. You can't 
turn the clock back and make amends with your dad years and years ago it's done you know what i'm saying you got to focus on the here and now but i know it's hard for him you know because i know he felt awful like he treated his father like garbage for years and he's trying to make up for all that lost time and now he's running out of time so i know that's hard but he got to figure out a way to you know accept it you know he got to figure out a way to make peace with the past and you know forgive himself for that you know um, cause until he does that, he always going to feel some type of way, you know, that's just how it is. Um, moving on from that, um, I'm glad Liz kind of had that conversation with Gregory in a way, but at the same time, I get where Gregory coming from, you know, Jake is going to have to, you know, let that anger that, that he has for Jason burn out. But I don't know, it's such a complex situation with Jason and Jake. I don't know if that's going to happen the way that Gregory is trying to put it out there. I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't know if Jake going to let, I don't know if that anger ever going to burn out of him. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it will, maybe it won't. It's, it's, it's a very complex situation, you know, and I know Finn and Gregory's situation was a complex situation, but I feel like this is more complicated than anything. So I think it's going to take a bit more than burnout for that flame to go out. I'm just saying, because Jake seemed to have a lot of resentment. Um, and that's why I feel like whenever Jake is ready, him and, um, you know, whenever he's really ready to sit and have a conversation with Jason and really like listen to Jason or talk with him, I feel like that anger is still going to be there. Unless Jason can really get him to listen to him and try to understand from his point of view why he does what he does. You know what I'm saying? But it ain't looking good for Jason when you make moves that makes it look like you're putting other people or other situation above your kids. That's not good. Like, how do you explain that? I'm sorry, because if I was in Jake's shoes, there's no explanation. You know what I'm saying? Like, I come from a parent who was not in my life. You know what I'm saying? So none of their explanations could really, you know, even to this day, I've had a parent do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, try to explain why you know, they weren't there or whatever. And then you go back to doing what you were doing that took you away. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, <laughs> I I just, I can't. So I definitely could relate to the Jake character with that, you know, with an absentee parent like that. I could definitely relate. Um, I think it's going to take a lot of time. I think it's going to take a heartfelt conversation, something for him to get over it, if he will ever get over it. I, I just feel like with Jake and Jason, it's probably always going to be some tension there. You know what I'm saying? I know Liz is hard for her because she don't know how to help her son. You know, she don't know what to do. And, you know, I know she wished that she could say something or do something that would make him, you know, feel better or find some healing or whatever. But I, at this point, ain't nothing Liz could do. Ain't nothing Liz could do in this one, but just be there for him. That's it. I mean, I don't think there's really anything she could do to heal that situation. That's between the two of them. You know, they're going to have to talk that out and figure it out. Um, but anyway, that was pretty much the whole episode. Hit the comments. Let me know what you all thought about it. Peace.